Hey guys, today I'm gonna do another video and this time uh, doing it slightly in different fashion. I'm not um, speaking as I'm recording this. This is a voice over type of method. <laughs> but I filmed it just with my scope and the scope does not have like a good mic on there. Actually, it's pretty bad to be honest with you. It's just pretty good video, but when it comes down to audio, it just, uh, it's not meant for it. So I'm gonna do a voiceover and quickly go over some of the uh, problems that I've encountered uh, several times in a row now with uh, SanDisk flash drives that have been coming into the lab for data recovery. Uh, the unit that you see in front of me right now is uh, the unit that um, we usually get with a broken off connector but this time as you can see this resistor is very burnt out. And I've tested all of the uh, headers um, and PCB pads. They all seem to be in good standing, uh, even though they seem to be uh, reworked previously. But uh, I didn't notice any disconnections. Now, I mean, because it's been heated up, I will be removing the connector uh, regardless, just to confirm that it's not um, a simple issue waiting to be happening soon. Uh, so. First thing, first let's uh, remove this um, resistor because this is obviously burnt and uh, that is on uh, the same uh, power rail that is coming through um, uh, a USB, I guess like 5 volt USB converts to whatever it needs to be converted to, I don't remember exact specs, and then hits the controller. So uh, pads here as you can see they are not ripped. Uh, they are pretty much in place. So my guess is gonna be that this is this flash drive got stuck into some kind of uh, USB hub that maybe had like a surge go through it and quickly into the process, uh, you know, uh, something blew up. Now uh, I'm gonna remove these side anchors. I don't want to just cut them off because sometimes. Like, I just want to make sure, like, I, I would really want to make this flash drive be as, pretty much as good as new again. Um, so I'm going to use this um, uh, compound that uh, a friend of mine sent from uh, Brazil. This, uh, this metal is called um, Rose Mix, and uh, you can probably find it on uh, eBay. Uh, it's very common in Eastern Europe and some other parts of the world as well uh, but uh, this stuff has extremely low um, melting point and uh, it cools off and stays liquid for quite a while so uh, as you can see I was able to just remove the connector by heating up uh, this compound and there I go it was basically liquefied to a point where anchors just could slide right off um, all of the pads seem to be intact, no breakers, no breakers, no breaks uh, on them there. So I'm just going to remove the remaining parts of uh, headers from the connector and just prepare the area for the new connector to go on. Now the reason why I removed it is that I didn't want to deal with the situation where because, you know, um, whoever was working on this device the last time heated up, heated up the connector too much and then something inside of the connector maybe was not aligned properly and that would be like a really really rookie mistake I have uh, literally hundreds of these brand new connectors in stock so using another one isn't a big deal uh, this is what uh, these connectors look like um, but first let me just clean this up real quick yeah so the area looks really good and it wasn't the original issue like I said a lot of these flash drives coming in with the problem related to the broken connector but that would be really obvious and having a broken connector go along with the line with the burnt out resistor on uh, power input is not something that just makes sense. This clicks in, they are pretty much OEM connectors even the dots line up so it's not, it's a standard thing. Um, just gonna remove this little hangover piece. <laughs> Uh, really doesn't need to be there. Come out, come out. There you go. Yeah, come out. And uh, the wings, they just have to be bent in to hug the board and uh, keep it tight. So there we go. That's done. 
and uh, as you can see it lines up very very good almost like new uh, now <laughs> now that I'm just voicing over this I really do need to get myself um, some new tips I ordered some tips from um, uh, JBC but they're taking their time I don't know how long this usually takes and I couldn't find uh, any uh, um, quicker sources for getting tips for nano uh, stations so as you can see the tip that I got is pretty burnt out by now I tried to tin it, retin it and just does not want to pack. it's got a, like a entire hole burned through the bottom shoe of it so <clears throat> I'm gonna use my um, um, 245 for it and that will do on the job just as good and just as quick for us look at that that looks that looks brand new that looks really good uh, I always like to put a bit more solder on the top of the connector as well even though that you're not gonna see that uh, being done at the factory uh, but often enough the bottom portion of the um, uh, ground pad that the uh, uh, anchor is supposed to go through gets ripped out and there's nothing to really uh, uh, grab onto uh, on this side even though we got some uh, um, some leftover pads here that we can really clinch to uh, adding a bit more on the top just adds a bit more structural support I guess uh, that's why it's just kind of like I've been using that technique for a while so that's pretty much it um, let's tin up the pad for the resistor and uh, work further in that maybe is a bit too much should have went with a little less we'll clean it off after if we need to so I got another board here that's a donor board and the donor board has that same resistor that I changed on the last repair and as you can see there's flux around it so I'm just gonna gently take this off and I don't know like this is uh, like I said most of the time we get them with connector problems but several times already uh, in this last real little while we've been getting them exactly like this so yeah I was a bit afraid of that, that it will be a little too much solder on those pads. Okay, take the resistor off. And let's just wick out the access solder. I'm actually wasting over this in my backyard, so you guys hear the nature. It's not inside of the shop. I don't have birds singing and AC running, um, like external AC running in my shop. Let's so if you hear that, that's what it is. Enjoying the weekend and doing the voiceover. So there we go. Clean that up. That should be good. Grab the resistor back on, and boom! Like, look at that. This is this is better than OEM. Better than Sandisk intended it to be. I bet this will last longer now than it did when it was brand new. Unless they put it in another uh, power uh, USB. USB hub or burn it out <laughs> again. So let's clean it up and get it nice and fresh again. Just a quick little alcohol rub down. Thing is, is that sometimes I don't get things shown clearly in the camera. The reason for that is that the field of view in the camera is much, much smaller than it. Well, I got it as close as it could have been, but it's much smaller still uh, than what I usually see in the eyepieces. So in the eyepieces, the picture and what I'm seeing is great and everything is visible. So that's pretty much that's pretty much done here. Now, uh, let me just grab a, an extension cord uh, for uh, the USB and plug this thing into it. Uh, extension cord is great just because if the connector is broken off the the leads that have to be remade they'll be always weak and forcing the connector to go into the back of the PC is not a great idea but if you plug it into an extension cord the extension cord can be plugged in with however you want it right so there we go plug that in and let's get this plugged into the laptop uh, Hmm. Whoops. 
nothing. <laughs> We're not seeing the LED light up, and that's not a good sign. That's that's not a good sign because the connector is fresh. That possibility of uh, not delivering what has to be delivered is completely ruled out. Uh, the component came off of the tested working board and uh, having that component been burnt also is zero and I've tested it with the multimeter that component was good. If you can see where uh, the trace goes to eventually uh, on this flash drive actually goes to the controller so when this was burnt it must have overloaded the controller and controller had failed so um, nothing wrong with the um, uh, resistor but if the controller was burned originally with the power surge that the unit received it's no longer good um, I mean I don't know ways of fixing that um, but it's not the end of the world and the good news is, is that this is a SanDisk device and I've repaired so many SanDisk flash drives in this last little period that I'm pretty much stacked on everything that exists that's made by SanDisk so this recovery will require a donor component uh, to be removed from the donor board and uh, that is a controller controller some may say well you know what what if there is encryption there is no encryption on these devices there is encryption on some of the older SanDisk flash drives uh, ones with the much bigger uh, size controllers and usually they would be in the range of one like one two I've seen them on four gigabyte units I think I have even seen it on eight gigabyte unit ones uh, but not so common this is a 64 gigabyte flash drive that you can see on markings there 064 G uh, that's uh, definitely not an encrypted 515-5 uh, controller super common uh, and like I said the the same board that we worked, we just took the resistor off of, has exact same uh, spec controller. Uh, <clears throat> at least I think it does um, uh, to uh, remove and replace. Because yes, we could technically take the NAND off of it, stick it in the reader, read the NAND for 64 gig NAND reader uh, procedure. That would take uh, at least like a day. To read it then being a sand disk will take another day to run air correction so why not just jack the uh, uh, controller from a working donor and have it do the work for you that's what I prefer to do and the results are if it works the results are going to be better than performing chip off recovery logical reconstruction of the um, image is hardly can compared to um, a hardware function of the same flash drive. So I just marked the uh, donor with a O, just that way so we know that it's been transplanted. And I'm gonna add um, also some flux on this unit, remove it, and we'll put that right on the uh, patient. And uh, as long as they match, they will be functional the problem uh, for most people would be is like how do you get the same flash drive that has the same spec controller that is the biggest issue and the, the reason why is that let's say um, you have a flash drive that you bought a couple of years ago and it's a 64 gigabyte flash drive uh, it failed on you and you want to do this let's say you even have uh, all the equipment to remove components or your friend has all the equipment to re remove all, all these components problem is having that same board because what's been made two years ago or even six months ago chances are it's not available in stores because the pr production had been modified production had changed and now uh, things even though they look the same on the inside they don't necessarily look the same on the outside and if they don't look the same on the sorry even though if they look the same on the outside they might not not necessarily be the same on the inside and if they're not the same on the inside they're not compatible so having access to uh, extended inventory of these uh, donor flash drives that we've repaired in the past or purchased ourselves for parts and R&D and other purposes 
uh, that's what gives us this opportunity to recover them with such little effort that just moving transplanting those components can make or uh, break the case. I'm just going to add a bit more flux uh, and run those uh, pads with the um, soldering iron just to ensure that they clinched and uh, everything is good and shiny. Two, three, and the last one. There we go. Four. All right. So now we've got our patient board, um, donor controller, donor resistor that we've put there. I'm just going to spray it up with a little bit of alcohol again. Get rid of that um, flux that was stuck. And we'll plug it in and see if it's gonna work or if it won't work. Just gonna warm it up a little bit so that all the alcohol evaporates that's underneath the PGA. Um, All right, so we're almost ready there. Plug this in. All right, let's test it. On the other side, the liquid stuff, it's flux. It's no clean. You don't have to clean it off. It's non-conductive. We're not risking to short out the board. Plug this in. And what do you know? There you go. There we go. LED comes on. LED coming on is a good sign, and especially when it flashes like this, and when you get a name of the partition for the external unit to come up, you know you did your job right. So uh, this is how those cases are handled. If you guys need help with your SanDisk flash drive, link in the description. If you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.